Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger, and this video is all about the 2015 Ford Mustang GT. Let's go. All right, welcome back to another wrong build video. If this is your first time, I test every single engine for the car. I then build the car in four different disciplines, off-road, track, drag, and drift. So we're going to be giving you four separate builds in this video. But the first thing I want to do is give you the engine. Right before I do that, I want to mention something at the top of this video. And that is that in our Discord server, we have a spot called Need for Speed Heat Cruise. This is for crew leaders to post their crews if they're recruiting. I know there's a lot of players out there, particularly new players, that are looking for a level 50 crew. And you might be able to find one if you join the Discord and then look under that Need for Speed Heat Cruise section, that channel. There are a few crews that have posted already, and I expect a lot more after this video airs. So definitely go in, join the Discord. There's a link in the description down below to join our Discord and then look under Need for Speed Heat Cruise if you're looking for a crew. There are crew leaders there that are recruiting currently, so definitely check that out. All right. Let's give you the most important piece of information first, and that is the engine for this car. The fastest engine for this Mustang GT is the 710 horsepower 3.9 liter V8. I tested every single engine, all 10 of them, and this engine ran the fastest, and it was not really that close. There, were, there was one other engine that came close, but it was like not that close. It was pretty clear that the 710 horsepower engine was the right one. Let's get into the build, because I went through this on the track. I made a lot of adjustments as I was testing this, and the reason I don't throw this testing in the video is because it's kind of a boring process. It's just me running Arian over and over and over again, making slight changes, and then recording times, and seeing which parts make this car the fastest. So here's what I've come up with. This is the full track build. You can actually throw up the build card. We'll do it right now. We've got that 710 horsepower engine, ultimate plus engine parts with an ultimate dual turbo and the ultimate five by three pound NOS. We've got super track suspension, elite brakes, elite race tires, elite plus clutch, super five speed gearbox. This was interesting to test these two gearboxes. The five speed made a big difference. It was actually a lot faster with it. So five speed gearbox and then the super track differential. On the auxiliaries, I run NOS refills and NOS duration. Those are the two that seem to help the best when racing. Now, if you look at these stats, they don't look that impressive. It's a 2.270 to 60. Max torque is 859. You can get more out of other engines, but they don't perform on the track like this one does. 235 top speed, 1,234 potential horsepower, but we are running the dual turbo, so we get 1,200. That extra 34 horsepower with the single turbo is not worth it because the dual actually performs better all around. It means seconds on each track. So this is it. This is the uh, track build for this. Let's go ahead and go outside the garage real quick and give you your live tuning. So for this car, we've got Steering sensitivity minus five, downforce plus five, traction control off, drift style on gas. I played with these a lot. I moved them around everywhere, and this definitely felt the best in terms of the overall performance for the car. Minimum steering and maximum downforce. This car is slippy in the back, which I expected to be a decent drift car because of the way it handles on the track, but we will see once we get into that. Let's go ahead and take this thing on a Sonic run real quick. Let's see what kind of time we can put up on Sonic. All right, here we go. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Let's go. Oh, get out of the way, guys. All right, so this is not gonna be a, this is definitely not gonna be a speed run. I feel it. I, it's just, it just feels a little, uh, little off. It's, I'm a little cold. I'm making excuses before I make any m mistakes. Look at this. Let's restart. We're not we're not making a mistake on the first freaking corner. All right. Like I said, I'm a little cold. I'm not warmed up yet. But let's see how this goes. Uh, much better. Still kind of slow, but we're doing it. We're letting it fly. One thing I noticed about this car on the track is that it has decent top speed. It gets to 230 pretty pretty quick, especially with the five-speed gearbox for some reason. And I think it. 
I, I was gonna say I think it has something to do with the torque, but it doesn't have a lot of torque. So I'm pretty surprised, actually. Oh, this is wide. We're gonna need to cut it. There we go. Alright, not my best. Not my best. It's got an excellent... Oh, stay away from those. It's got an excellent turning radius. I'm not driving it very well right now. But it is... It, it turns very, very well. It's one of those cars that's like... You just wish was quicker off the line. You wish it had a little bit better acceleration. Because if it did, it would be absolutely phenomenal. Alright, I'm taking that. It's kind of a slow shortcut, but I'm taking it. We're gonna refill and go, baby. Let's go. I'm hoping to run a time in the low 40s, if I can. It probably won't, because I've made some mistakes. I've made quite a few. Oh my goodness. Not a great turn. The goal on Sonic here is to NOS after every corner. Shout out to JCVD for that tip. See, it, it definitely hugs the road well. I'm surprised with this Mustang a little bit on the track. It does pretty well. It's just not as quick. It doesn't have that acceleration like I said earlier. It just doesn't accelerate out of corners like you want it to. If it did, it would be pretty, pretty competitive because it has a very nice turning radius. Hey, we ran a time in the in the low 40s, man. We really did it. I thought it was going to be terrible. I bet you can knock five to six seconds off that run. You can probably run that in the 30s with the correct driver. Now, for me, I might be able to knock three, four seconds off because I did make quite a few mistakes. Um, but but yeah, that th this is possible. A, th a time in the 30s is definitely possible for this car, which is really, really good. I mean, anything that can run it in the 30s is is uh, it's pretty decent. So a, a low 40, that was a 244 uh, for this Mustang. Um, first of all, before we get into the next build, man, shout out to Surfy for this amazing militia rap. And if you guys don't know who Surfy is, OMG Surfy is a rap creator on Xbox here. He makes all of my militia raps, and this is one of them. This is beautiful. I believe we uh, we might have given this away on a stream. I can't remember, but this is an amazing rap. So shout out to OMG Surfy. If you find one of his raps in the community tab, definitely follow him as an artist and download everything he's got. This guy's absolutely amazing. All right. Uh, that's it for this track build, man. I really like the way this handles. I'm a, I'm a fan of this car on the track. It's just not as fast. On Arian, it ran a time of uh, like 2.59, and I'll be, I'll be honest, you can definitely run it faster than that. That's without the shortcut, by the way. So 2.59 without the shortcut, I definitely think it can run faster with the correct driver, but for me, that was it, and I just, I'm kind of sad about that. It definitely performs better on longer straighter courses. But uh, yeah, that's any, that's everything I got to say about that. Let's just get over to the drag build. Let's let's build this thing to go fast in a straight line. So the common switches that I do for the drag build are the NOS. We're gonna switch to a one by 15. Um, if you don't have the ultimate yet, just switch to the the tank that's bigger. So like uh, you know one by six, one by nine, one by 12. You want that one by tank. You want one big tank to get you through the entire quarter mile. Uh, track suspension still. We're gonna switch the tires because we need something with a little bit more traction and that is gonna be the drag tires. So let's equip those. We're gonna keep the clutch the same. The gearbox we might switch, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the five. We're gonna see when we get outside uh, the garage, we can check the quarter mile. And the track differential, we're gonna keep. So this is everything. This should be the correct build. We're just gonna see which gearbox performs the best in a quarter mile and then we'll be good to go. With the five speed, we can run an eight. 0.97 but we need we do need to adjust the downforce down it doesn't change the quarter mile but i would recommend putting the downforce all the way down anyways because it does lighten up the car's body a little bit and even though the posted quarter mile is kind of the same uh i definitely think this will help in in your drag races with your friends steering sensitivity really doesn't matter all right so 8.97 with the five speed let's drop the six speed in here real quick and let's see what it does to the quarter mile. 8.87, I was wrong. The six speed is the faster 
gearbox for the quarter mile. This is pretty interesting because the six-speed gearbox really doesn't perform that well on the track. I don't pref I don't prefer the six-speed on the track, but it does work for for this uh, drag build. So this is this is it. It's pretty interesting. 8.87 for the quarter mile, which is not that good. It's gonna be in the in the bottom half of the quarter mile times that I've been able to record. But uh, yeah, 8.87. Let's throw up the build card and uh, take a look at the drag build in its entirety. So we've got the 710 horsepower, 3.9 liter V8 with the Ultimate Plus engine parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, and the Ultimate 1x15 pound NOS, Super Track Suspension, Elite Brakes, Elite drag tires, Elite plus clutch, Super plus six speed gearbox, and the Super track differential. Uh, auxiliaries are the same. We're running refill and NOS duration. And uh, live tuning, like I said earlier, is minimum steering because that's what we had on the track build, and minimum downforce because that helps the car be a little bit lighter. Sorry, I, I'm saying that wrong. I can't, I gotta, I gotta correct myself. The car's not lighter. There's just less downward pressure on the car from the air when you lighten up the downforce. I, I need to I need to watch what I'm saying. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the drift build. Alright, so this is a very typical rear wheel drive car. This thing should slide very, very nicely with a rear wheel drive setup. And for that, we need the speed cross suspension. We need the drag tires that we already have on and we need to switch the differential to a pro drift differential. This is the starting point for a rear wheel drive car drift setup. Now you might need to make slight adjustments. We're gonna find that out when we take the car out, but this is where you wanna start every time. This will work as a starting point for any rear wheel drive car in the game, and then you make slight adjustments as you need to. The gearbox, I'm going back to the five speed because that's what I'm gonna run in a track build. I don't want to have to switch it back and forth and I think the five speed will actually benefit us a little bit uh, for this drift build so this is it we're gonna go here we're gonna make a little change to our live tuning and we will be ready to drift this thing around all right for the live tuning we need maximum steering sensitivity and minimum downforce again we don't want a lot of downforce on the car because we want it to slide more and steering we want to be able to whip it back and forth so uh, this is it there we go let's test this thing out Oh my gosh, it wants to rotate so much. Hey, but the control is decent. It does, oh, it does like to over rotate. You're gonna have to counter steer this really crazy. Counter steering is gonna, is gonna be a must on this one. It, it does like to over rotate. We're gonna keep going. All right, so not my best, right? That really wasn't a great drift run, but I got like 68,000 or 67,000 for that. Oh man, that that's really good. That's really good, dude. I, I like this. I like the way this thing handles. All right, let's, let's drift this thing around for fun. I like this, I like this build. Perfect. It, dude let's put up the build card all right again we got that 710 horsepower 3.9 liter v8 ultimate plus engine parts ultimate dual turbo uh we've got the 5 by 3 pound nos or the 1 by 15 in this case it doesn't really matter i don't use nos when i'm drifting anyway uh for the chassis we've got the super speed cross suspension elite brakes and the elite drag tires elite plus clutch super five speed gearbox and the pro drift differential the keys to this build are obviously the suspension, the tires, and the differential. That's what makes the car drift. All right, live tuning, we've got the steering sensitivity at plus five, downforce at minus five, traction control off, and drift style on gas. 
that's it let's take this thing off road let's switch a few things around make sure we have that five by three pound nos we're gonna go to the rally suspension and then we're gonna go to the off-road tires we also need to switch the drivetrain to a rally drivetrain or a rally differential excuse me there we go and uh this will be our our off-road build let's take it out to htv2 and rumble those are our test courses and uh, let's see how this thing stacks up with the other off-road cars. All right, for me, a decent time would be something around 150 to 152. Anything higher than 152 would be kind of slow. Anything below 150 would be very fast. So let's get this going. It's a very slow start. I had trouble passing those guys on that first turn. It's a very, very slow start. We're going to see what happens, though. A lot of handbrake usage off-road. I use it for most of the hard turns. Turns like this, you can float. And then NOS when you get straight. If you NOS while you're, while you're floating, you're going to lose your entire bottle and not do anything with it. All right, it's definitely got some speed off-road. I definitely I definitely think it's competitive. I don't know how competitive, but we'll we will see. Much better turn that time. Alright. We're getting it now. Now this is sort of a tricky spot in this race because the AI like to take that corner inside and then end outside like that. I completely ruined my time for this run. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to run this back. That AI just completely ruined the time. That was a 153 with the AI bump. And uh, I think we're going to be able to run this uh, below 152 for sure. Let me run it back real quick. I'll be w back with you in just a moment. Like I thought... A 152.44. I thought we could actually get it under 152, but I think you can if uh, you have a really, really clean run. 152.44. I'm going to write that down. We're going to move on to Rumble. All right. A good time on this uh, without a shortcut would be anywhere around 3.10. That's a really good time. But I would be happy with anything under 3.15. So anywhere between 3.10 and 3.15, this car is going to be decent off-road if it can hit those marks. But let's see how it does. All right, for the first part of this race, it feels pretty good. Oh, it clips a lot on that hill. Oh my goodness. There I am saying that it feels really good on that first part of the race, and then it just clips like crazy on that part. Wow. Okay, hopefully we don't have that many issues going forward the rest of this race. Of course, we're into a wall. Oh my gosh, with these clips, dude. It does not want to stay out of the map here. It wants to clip on everything. We're going to have to probably stay to the right on this upcoming hill. So on this hill, we're going to stay a little more right and see what happens. Nope, still clippy. That was much better, actually. If you take that hill to the right, it'll be better for sure. Alright, I don't know if we're going to hit the time that I thought we were going to hit. I think this car definitely does better on the shorter HTV2. It just doesn't feel... It just doesn't feel right. Oh my goodness. So many little mistakes are going to are gonna equal a, a, a big difference in time on this. So I'm... To get my final time, I'm going to have to run this again, probably. We're already at three minutes. So I have a little ways to go here. I don't know if we're going to make 315. This is going to be close. Especially not if the car doesn't stay off those bumps, man. Here we go. 311. 
Nosset, 313, 14, 15, 16. I made a lot of mistakes. It can definitely run it under 15. There was a lot of little little bumps and collisions, and I ran into the wall on the first lap, and I don't know. This is this is gonna be a rerun for sure. We're gonna need to get a clean time on this. Alright, a 315.39. That was a very clean race. I had maybe one small error, but it didn't cost me a lot of time. 315.39. Um, definitely possible to run it under 315, but we're going to leave it there. This is the off-road build. Let's go ahead and throw up the build card and show you the full build, and then uh, let's get to the summary. So we have that same engine, 710 horsepower, 3.9 liter V8, the Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo, and the Ultimate 5x3 pound NOS. Super Rally Suspension, Elite Brakes, Elite Off-Road Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Super 5-Speed Gearbox, and the Super Rally Differential. This is the off-road build. The auxiliaries, uh, I forgot, are refills and duration like always. And then of course we need the live tuning, which is steering sensitivity plus 5, downforce minus 5, traction control off, and drift style on gas. Alright, let's see how this thing compares to everything else. Let's sum this video up. Alright, so. After testing this car on all the different builds, the different disciplines, this thing is like the epitome of a mid-level car. This is directly in the middle of everything. It is, It scores okay on drift, but some of it is kind of hard to handle. It does all right on track, but it doesn't compete with some of the top cars in the game. It's sort of in the middle. It runs like a 259 on Arian. Um, it does okay on off-road, but it's not great. It's like kind of in the middle towards the, kind of towards the bottom off-road, but in the middle, it does okay. And on drag, it runs an 8.87, which is in the middle of the pack on drag racing. Like there's a lot of cars that can do an 8.87, 8.7, uh, and it's just in the middle. It's like this very average, not bad, but not great car. It handles okay on the track. It's just an okay car. It's just very, okay that's the only way i can describe it so for people who love the mustang this is a very usable car this is something you can use for gaining rep at nights you can use it for trying to get ultimate parts you can use it for these things it's not like the best car for it obviously but you can use it for that you can use it for drifting you can use it for off-road uh you're not gonna lose to the ai in this car but it's just okay it's really just nothing special which is kind of disappointing considering how popular this car is uh on a worldwide scale this is a very very popular model for mustang and this is i don't know it's just kind of weird and disappointing and i don't even know what to say about it right now so we're gonna leave it at that uh if you enjoyed the video thank you so much for for getting this far this is the very end of a long video and uh we'll have another wrong build coming up pretty soon i'm working on the acura nsx and uh that should be coming up next on this wrong build series uh don't forget guys i stream every tuesday and then i try to throw in a second stream if i have time on friday or saturday but every tuesday at 9 p.m pacific time for the crew 2 summit and then maybe a, a different stream friday or saturday just depends on what's going on in the week lately i've been busy haven't been able to throw those streams in but i will be doing that uh going forward in the future i just need to make sure i have the time to do it all right, that's it for this one, guys. If you have any questions, again, my DMs are always open. Uh, even now, I have tons of DMs every day, and I try to answer every single one. It may take me a little time, but you're welcome to send me a DM anytime, and I will answer. Uh, I'm on all the socials, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all of the places you can find me. Uh, that's it, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much. Shout out to the Militia Subs. Trigger out.